Hey y'all, it's Ginger from Gin and Clever. Today we're gonna to be doing the tutorial for our cute little silky chicken. I really love the plaid in this. And also remember guys, I'm gonna to talk to you about how you can do variations if you're not into the pink, purple, blue plaid. And you can also think about doing your chicken in a different color because I've met silkies in all colors. So grab your supplies, let's get comfortable and let's get clever. All right, so what I'm gonna start with is I'm gonna start for our little plaid chicken. Um, oops, I just picked up some pink accidentally in my brush and that's okay. Kinda gotta be pay attention to your palette. But I'm gonna cover this whole canvas with white paint. It's gonna be nice, fresh white paint. Now you may be saying, Ginger, why are you doing that? Well, it's kind of a Bob Ross technique. You know how Bob usually starts? He starts with a wet canvas with his oil paints and he uses a medium to kind of keep it wet and it helps everything kind of blend. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna try to work out any thick areas of paint. So I've got that all nice and brushed over. So nice and wet. I'm gonna rinse out that brush right there. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take some of this pink and I'm gonna take a nice broad brush and I'm gonna start a little below the top of the canvas and I'm gonna go across and you can kind of see because I'm pulling this pink paint through kind of wet white. It's gonna give it a little bit of a texture and that's a good thing. And I'm using the flat kind of broad side of my brush. If you find that you're getting a little too much white, you can always go back and wipe your brush off on your paper towel. And we're gonna go ahead and put in four stripes because that's gonna be where we're gonna start this plaid pattern. Now, if the pink, blue, kind of purple scheme is not um, your bag or your cup of tea, um, and, or you've requested a custom color, which a few people have, you wanna go more with your decor, think about the white is your light color, so it'll be your color one. Your pink is gonna be your medium color, so it'll be your color two. And your blue is gonna be your dark color, so it's gonna be color three. So you would just replace um, these with the colors that are in your kit to kind of go a little more along with your decor. Now I'm doing my third one and fourth one, and I will tell you right now, even though these are my designs, they do not always turn out the same way, um, and that's absolutely fine. So I'm gonna wash my brush. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to take a slightly smaller brush. You could use a bigger brush and turn it sideways, or you can use a smaller brush. And what I'm gonna do is make sure the brush is dry. I just had to get it wet to make sure it's nice and clean. And then I'm gonna take my blue and I'm gonna put a stripe above and below each of my pink stripes because that's going to come in handy later. So this chicken may end up a little more pastel-y. Okay. So we're going horizontal right now, all the way across, and I'm just kind of relaxing and letting the paintbrush kind of dictate. You can wrap these around because these are gallery wrapped canvases. You can totally wrap these around. I'm gonna wash this brush really quickly, dry it off. You can see I'm super fancy here with my paper towel. Then I'm gonna go back into the pink with the flat side of the big brush. And I'm gonna do the same thing, except I'm gonna go vertical and I'm gonna pull it straight down. 
in my hair a little more paint and you can kind of see how that's giving a different texture. It's giving a little bit more of an effect. Probably not gonna do these as thick as, and I'm cleaning my brush off. I know my chicken's gonna be there, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm using quite a bit of paint. I'm gonna clean this off, but I know that in between each, I'm just giving it a little wipe off on the towel to kind of make sure that it doesn't get too smudgy. And you can see there's a lot of variation there. So, and then we're gonna do the same thing that we did horizontally, we're gonna do it vertically. We're gonna take, I'm gonna wash my brush real quick. And I'm gonna take my blue and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go down the outside edges, just like that. And it's gonna give us a nice plaid pattern. Now I'm doing this a little differently than I did the buffalo check um, on the deer. If you've watched that tutorial and you can go check that one out on the Jen and Clever YouTube, I'm sure it is right there next to this in the feed. And so I've got that. So I've done this just a little differently. And I'm gonna wipe my brush off so it's nice and clean. And now what we're gonna do is each square where the horizontal and the vertical cross, we're gonna go ahead and fill that in with blue to make it a little darker. So every time we cross, we're gonna come in and darken that in just a little bit and I'm not overworking it too much because I know it'll get all muddy and it'll get all one kind of one color if I do that, because I'm working wet on wet, so I want that blue to kind of stand out a little bit. And I'm filling it in really nicely, and we're just gonna do that all the way down. Give us this really pretty kind of feminine plaid pattern in these colors. So there we go with that. Now it's all super, super wet. Now I'm gonna use my brush again. I've washed it because I wanna make sure it's nice and clean. And I'm gonna use not the side of my brush, I'm just gonna use the tip. What I'm gonna do is go down the middle of every horizontal pink stripe. I'm gonna go across like that. And notice I'm holding my brush at the end. I'm just using this finger for a little bit of control. I want it to be really relaxed and I just want it to glide across that way. It's just giving us that little bit of extra detail. And then we're gonna do the same thing, but we're actually going to go, we're gonna go vertical. And instead of down the middle of the pink stripes, I take it back. We're gonna go ahead and do this down the middle of the white ones as well. I missed a step there. Catch my own direction sometimes. Because we're gonna break up that white. It's gonna give it a little bit of contrast. So it's like that. We got a lot of lines going on right now. And so then I'm gonna take my blue and I'm gonna go right down the middle here like that gonna give it some really nice texture and some variation. Now I didn't go as purple this time. Okay, so here folks is where we take our snack break because this needs to dry.
All right, y'all, we're back from the snack break. Um, I'm back for more than one snack break because I finished my chicken, except for his eyes, which I messed up because I overpainted them and I was really embarrassed about it in my tutorial. And then I realized that I wasn't filming. So I had to very hastily repaint another background. It is not as pretty, um, but it will do. But I wanted you to be able to see. This is my original chicken example. I went with more of a purple color in that one. Um, but I did a blue here. Um, for this paint along, I may just put the purple in the kit. This is decisions I think I will be putting. What we're going to do is we're going to paint our chicken. Again, for me, first time for you. Not a big deal. Just wanted you guys to know that I'm totally honest and transparent here. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my whites, and this is a very, very dry background, trust me. I'm gonna go into the top left of center quadrant, and that's gonna be where my chicken's head is. Now, what I love about silkies is they are super fluffy. I've got a few friends that have silkies in their lives. I am not a chicken raising person. I am a chicken respecting person, so I totally get it. I'm using the tip inside of my brush to put in some white. And with the thinness of this craft paint, you are gonna notice your plaid coming through. We're gonna come back and make another layer in a little while and kind of take that out. We're gonna come down here on the tip of our brush and I'm holding it really loosely and just kind of flicking it because we're gonna give our chicken a little bit of a neck here. It's okay if some of that color peeks through. But he's got a little bit of a neck. And then I'm gonna do a curve that goes off this way and that's gonna be our back of our chicken. And what I love about these silkies, not just their fluffy heads, um, are their fluffy, fluffy tails. So, I'm um, Gonna kind of just flick my brush around a few times. Can use the flat to fill it in here. It's okay. If we want to see those brush strokes kind of layer up and thicken this chicken a little bit. Now we're gonna finish out the body shape. I'm gonna start here and I'm actually going to come down kind of like a pizza slice or an upside down raindrop. It's gonna all come to a point that's gonna be our chicken's legs. Now, I'm gonna fill that in, and I'm not just gonna fill it in with regular old brush strokes. I'm gonna make sure we get some fluffiness here because I want a super fuzzy, fuzzy chicken. And we're gonna fill this in too. And the more you can kind of see those brush strokes, uh, the better. Now, when you're doing this, if you're more comfortable, you can take another snack break if you want and let your chicken dry for the first coat and come back in for the second. And, or you can just keep going. I'm going to definitely keep going. Uh, but there's this wonderful feature called the pause button. And you can also rewind at any part if you miss anything. But I'm gonna fill in my chicken here. And you should be able to see that there's still some visible plaid showing through. So I'm definitely gonna come up here and I don't mind so much on the edges because I like that, but I definitely want my face to be a little more filled in. I want that to be a little more filled in as well. We just want him to have a nice color. Now that peek through of some of those background colors really does add some dimension to it. It's a lot of fun. I did this one a little differently as an experiment. Um, you can go back and check out. I've got another tutorial video loaded up for a really adorable little deer um, on a buffalo check background. And he definitely, I'm gonna fill in there just a little bit more. He definitely did him the deer before the background. But there we've got our fuzzy chicken body and I'm gonna wash my brush. Always kind of wash it between colors. I'm gonna make sure that I get it nicely dried off. Now I'm gonna switch over to my fine little brush and come into the black paints because I'm gonna go down here to the bottom. I'm gonna scoot this up just a little and I'm gonna put his feet on. 
Now I'm gonna attach just a little bit of black here and then I'm gonna do two kind of long spindly chicken toes out front and then one toward the back. Now obviously my chicken has two legs but we're only gonna show one. So the next thing I'm going to do, because I'm going to give that face just a little bit of time. I'm checking on my dryness up here. I'm going to tilt this just a bit. Yeah, that's pretty wet and shiny right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of definition from my bird. Just kind of flicking some black lines in to kind of show where my feathers are and to give them a little definition pop him out against that background just a tiny bit but i'm not outlining him because we're going to add some other colors to this to kind of bring it all together and i don't want to lose that nice kind of soft fluffiness our chicken has but we're definitely going to give him a little bit more character here and i'm going to come right here and I'm going to give our chicken a wing. I'm going to start over close to where the neck is. And I'm just going to do a few little sweepy sort of strokes. To kind of give our chicken a wing, I might give a few little touch-ups. I can't wait to see what you guys come up here with. And if you find that your paint's getting a little gray or you've got a little too much paint, definitely wipe off that brush and come back to it. And like I said, you can always walk away and go have a few minutes. You can cheat a little bit and use the hair dryer. I use the hair dryer a lot um, to speed the process up. Now I'm gonna come in and we're gonna give our bird her or his face. So I'm gonna start about in the middle and I'm gonna paint a little wedge shape for my beak. Now I'm not doing too much else other than kind of pushing that paint up that way because I don't want it to be too too dark but we're gonna give it just a little bit of coverage there now that means we have a chicken who has no eyes right now that's fine I'm gonna wipe that off just a little bit and I may add just a touch more black paint I want it just a tiny bit darker because see if you put that dark on top of that kind of gray it's gonna give you a little bit more dimension give you a little more character and give you a little bit of a background to work with. And we'll talk about the hardest part of this when we get back to the eyes because that's always been a struggle for me. Now, here's kind of the fun part where everybody like, oh, she's gone crazy. Okay, I'm gonna go into the pink. And I'm gonna do kind of the same thing that I did with the black. I'm just gonna, and I'm really not putting a lot of pressure. I'm just barely touching and kind of pulling that around and I'm following the shape of my chicken and the shape of my wings just a little bit and it's just giving my chicken some texture and it's also kind of helping it relate to the background that it's on because then it's definitely it's like oh that makes sense because that pink is there it gives us some unity in our canvas and I'm going to dry off my brush again I'm going to go into the blue um, that I'm using and I'm going to do just a little bit there too. Notice I've still not gone back to those eyes because what you guys didn't see in the last tutorial I filmed was I really made a mess out of those because I just wouldn't leave it alone because my chicken was looking a little possessed and you know what I've met some kind of possessed looking chicken so maybe that wasn't the wrong thing. Now, the one thing definitely in between this color and the next, make sure you wash and dry that brush because you're gonna get just a tiny bit of yellow. Now the yellow is gonna add a nice contrast and we're gonna add just little flicks of yellow around our chicken. But if you've got blue in your brush when you do that, what you're gonna end up doing is making your chicken look green. And I have never seen a green chicken. Maybe if it rolled in a fresh cut yard. I've seen dogs um, that do that sometimes. And, you know, Labradors and things like that. That have sometimes turned out a little green. But we're not doing that here. We're just making our chicken kind of a little happy party. 
because white things tend to reflect other colors around them. And I just really like that contrast of that yellow. So we are almost done. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back on top of the feet with my white on my fine little brush. Oop, that is very, very wet. Didn't mean for it to be so wet. Add water in there when I shouldn't have. And we're gonna add just some little pops of shine and highlights onto our chicken. Gonna do the same thing up here with the beak. And I'm actually gonna rest my hand on the edge of my dry canvas because I want my line to be nice and straight. And folks, here is the challenging part for me. I'm gonna load up the end of this fine brush. It's got a big bubble of white paint on it and I'm just going to come in and pop, pop. And that's all I'm gonna do. All right, y'all. I cannot wait to see what you create using this tutorial as a guideline. So definitely go over to the Facebook page for Jet and Clever Studio, share your creations. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments. Come join our community on Facebook. Don't forget, the best life is a clever one. I'll see y'all next time.